conditions here today, flat. Yes, very flat, as I'm on the levels. And in particular, I'm starting today's trig point walk with a trig point. Well, what's going on here, Dennis? Well, today is the day, or two days before I go on holiday. And today is the biggest trig point walk of them all. A 13.75 mile walk back home over that way. Or is it that way? One of the ways over there. So today I've got the opportunity to take in four trigs on the way back home. I've been dropped off this morning very early. So it's very early. The weather's just clearing. It should be a nice day. This is Nyland Hill Trig Point. So I thought I'd begin. So as it's a, a four bag walk, well, why not start on a trig point? So uh, I just got dropped off at the bottom of the hill and then I'll uh, walk the 13, which probably will end up being 15 miles back home and hopefully find some other trig points on the way. So let's get started. Viewpoint, Nyland Hill. And Nyland Hill, oh, I don't know why I can't say it properly. Nyland Hill sits right in the middle of a flat area between Glastonbury, Wells, Cheddar, and then over to, that's Wedmore Hill as well over there. And beyond Wedmore Hill, you can see Brent Knoll. And it's a brilliant view. This is absolutely 360 panoramic uh, of um, part of the levels as well. I'll have to cut half of this. Jesus, I'm waffling. So yeah, distance wise, you can see quite a distance from here. Historical reference, well, there's not really that much to talk about with Nyland Hill. It's just a little lump but somebody did write a book about it and said one of the most prominent advantages of this was it used to flood many hundreds of years ago around here. And this used to be a bit of high ground that provided a bit of sanctuary and a bit of uh, maybe farming or something like that, I would imagine. Yeah, so that's your viewpoint. Discovery index. It's getting a bit, oh, it's a bit exposed and windy up here. Uh, Discovery index, well, there is a public footpath that runs along around the side of Nyland Hill and it's easily accessible. It is a bit of a sharp incline mind. At, I think it's about 76 meters, something like that at this height. So access is easy enough. It's uh, essentially on public land. So actually Discovery Index is excellent for this uh, particular trick point. Picnic ability. It's a beautiful spot to have a picnic. You brought your sandwiches up here and had a sit down and chew away on your gentleman's relish. Oh, that doesn't sound well. Um, chew away on your salmon sandwich or something. It's a beautiful place to have a picnic. The only one uh, concern I've got this morning, it is early in the morning, I have never seen so many slugs. It's a slug fest. Be very careful where you do put anything down. I mean, I'm already, I'm just looking at 20 of them encroaching on the camera, so. Yeah, I, I won't be having picnic ability here today as I've got four trig points to do and it is, I've just had my breakfast. In terms of rating it for picnic ability, this is probably one of the best. Why not come here? Top marks, picnic ability. Got to make a move as this is going to be the longest walk as I've already mentioned probably. Keep banging on about it. So as I mentioned, it's about 13.7 miles and it'll end up being 15. My OS maps is telling me that it'll take me six hours. But the thing that's going for me that I think I can get a better time for that, it's very steep. This is going to be a bit treacherous going down, if I'm honest. That hill there is very steep. I slipped at one point on the way down, caught myself on one hand. The biggest concern I had is that I hadn't put my hand on a slug. There's that many slugs here. But um, yeah, it's short and sweet to get up, but very steep. I've got all day today. So like I say, six hours, might have a stop in Wedmore, because it's lovely, or wherever, for lunch, because I didn't actually make picnic ability today. I've got two tonics, and that's it, two bottles of water.
So there you have Nyland Hill. I can just about make out the trig point on the top there from here. And if you pan round, there's another hill just over here. That's where I thought the trig point was Mudgley. And it would be right near quite a famous cider farm called Wilkins Cider Farm. Very rustic, but also very good. Not that I'm a cider fan. Had a bit of experience when I was 18. Um, but anyway, it's not, it's called Bagley Reservoir, I think. So uh, hopefully, again, no research, we can find it easy enough. And OS Maps does make it look like it is accessible. Hopefully we don't have to navigate through a cornfield today because we have had some rain overnight and it will be absolutely piss wet through it. I mean wet, yes. Obviously some kind of automatic lawnmower. It's doing absolutely no bug at all. It's going out, you can see it's going over leaves. The leaves are just there when it's gone over it. Waste of money. Technology scam. First problem of the day, a gang of cows stood right over the gate. Oh, Jesus. I'll do me usual. Whoa! There you go, that usually works. Steady! Steady! See? Steady! Steady! Wave your up. Wave my arms around. Steady! Careful now! Gently! This is the worst bit when you get near the gate and they all leg it. So you go nice and slow. Nice and slow, Dennis. Don't make any sudden movements. Don't run for the gate. Steady now. Oh shit, the gate's broke. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, it's not. For a second there, I thought the gate was broke. There you go. How to walk past young cows. I've had to do it a few times on these walks. Best thing to do. Deep voice. Remain calm. And if necessary, raise your arm gently. And they're all right. Aren't you, lads? See you for dinner next week. Aww. I've just skirted past Wedmore, so I didn't actually go down the high street, which is a bit of a shame. I was intending to maybe pick up a sandwich from the little farm shop there. But speed is the essence today. Don't want to leave myself too much to do. I've burnt all my energy off. It's a nice little, pl nice little place, Wedmore. A couple of nice pubs. Some, a few little boutique shops. So I'm making good progress for the second trig point of the day. And the sun is out. There's an island, hill. Cheddar in the distance. Wedmore. And whilst these houses aren't particularly attractive, you can't really knock them for the view they've got from that back window. And the little patio area. It's fantastic. I'd probably live in a shit house for that view. Oops. Hopefully nobody can hear me. Lots of cows to negotiate, but to be fair, these look like milkers, so they're just very, they're not arse, they can't be bothered. 
You just want to eat. Eat and... Can't remember what the term is. I'll start waffling. Anyway, I think it's over here. It could be in someone's garden. And see if this one is triggerable. Oh, I suppose it's baggable, isn't it? Yeah, cows aren't bothered. Yeah, a bit long in the tooth. Long in the udder. And here is a reservoir. And there is a trig point. Now, I'll see if this gate, but I can already see a padlock on it. That ain't gonna happen. So I'd have to jump over there. And that is full of shit. I'm not going that way. Mm. This might be inaccessible, like I said. Oh shit, not another one. Bagley Reservoir, Reservoir Trick Point. Well, it's bagged. A Bagley Reservoir Trick Point. Viewpoint? Well, it's a bit, you've got this infrastructure of the reservoir here. So obviously that's a bit of a problem. Distance wise, you can just about see over to Cheddar, but visibility, oh, you can now see on the south side where we go in later as well. So you've, yeah, you've got a pretty good viewpoint in the distance. Historical reference, well, nothing because it's obviously Bristol water. There is an association with Mudgley, which happens to be when you put that in your search, Roger Wilkins Cider Farm. So that's pretty much it for historical reference. But it's an interesting trig point because it separates that part of the flat levels there with that part over there. So uh, yeah, unique, u uniquely located to say the least. Discovery index. Well, it's clearly visible from the field and also when you peer over the gate. The condition of it is obviously well protected, but clearly, because it's in this Bristol water thing, it's inaccessible. Picnic ability. Well, it'd be a lovely place to have a picnic, actually. It's nice and flat on some grass. It is really quiet, but you'd be under the cameras here watching you have your dinner. I'm not one for eating in front of cameras. So um, not practical and I won't be hanging around so a uh, bit of a difficult one to score really because i feel like it's um yeah you shouldn't be here and knowing that the cameras have already been alerted i probably need to leave sharpish i was gonna have a ton of here <sighs> right let's get out So I've done exactly five miles to this point, so I've still got another eight miles to go. Or nine, ten, depending on how well it goes. Descend the hill. And then walk about four miles to the next trig point, which is West Hay. Glorious, absolutely glorious. It's beautiful now. Yeah, I thought I'd put my glasses on now for disguise. Now I've uh, jumped over a gate. It did say no admittance. Uh, it didn't say no admittance. Jesus, don't incriminate yourself. That's why you should never say anything if you, unless your lawyer's with you. But I'm sure with this disguise, no one would recognize who I am. I mean, my nose isn't distinctive, is it? We 
naked sand now, down the hill. And then we're on a very flat bit and the hill right in the distance is where the last trig point is. And before we get there, we'll be going to the West Hay trig point, which is the lowest trig point in Somerset. If I recall, I think it's about four meters, maybe even less. So a new highlight for the trig journey. There was a sign saying that this footpath's closed. Bloody typical, isn't it? Well, I've sort of ignored it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm an engineer by trade. I, I trust your uh, your thing. Thank you for the guidance. I'm the first one to cross. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Unofficially, unofficially, yes. Thank you very much for that. The first unofficial person to cross a new footbridge. This is a drove. What is a drove? It's a mixture of a drive and a grove. So this is Parsons Drove, as it happens, going away over these levelly bits. And it's exactly halfway uh, on the journey today. Time-wise, I've done two hours. If I kept this pace up, I'd be on for a four hour finish as opposed to basically six hour finish. It's really flat which obviously helps with the speed of walking. And you have to say, it's absolutely gorgeous walking through here. There's nothing at all, well, there's no one. And in fact, so I've walked near enough seven miles and I haven't seen anybody at all except the trolls at the bridge. I mean, the two gentlemen at the bridge. So, yeah, real good bit of escapism coming around here. We're coming up to a little bit of a busy road and it's a very familiar point for me. So there's this strange hexagonal house here and West Hay is just at the bottom of that road and I've got it, there's no way around it. It's like a big detour, otherwise it's straight down the road. So I'll do that in a minute. But there is something called Sweets here, which is like a little cafe. So I'm just going to pop in and see if we can get a sandwich for picnic ability. So I'm going to get a ham sandwich. That. I think it comes with salad and everything. Mm. Hit the road again. I finished uh, my little ham bap. Thought I was that hungry. I thought I can't wait. I'll just eat it now. Just coming into the little village of West Hay now. They built this little section a couple of years ago. Spent a lot of money on all the fencing and everything. And it's actually a thing here, look. World Helicopter Speed Record on the evening of the 11th of August 1986. 250 miles an hour. F fastest helicopter. Drive past it all the time. Just thought someone had put a couple of benches there. And there it is. It's phone box number three. Travels. No phone. What's a defibrillator? Did I say that right? Defibrillator? Doesn't smell a piss. Just pick your own apples. An abundance of produce and apples. But I think as I mentioned in a previous episode, I neither like cider nor apples, unfortunately. Back onto trig points. I believe it's at the bottom of this road here. We're at a very low level here. 
and I think the statistic is four meters above sea level. Just shows you how low we are in the levels. Fortunately, I live on a hill, as I am a bit paranoid about a tsunami coming down the Bristol Channel again, like it did in the 1600s. Look that up, there you go. Right, let's keep an eye out for this trig point. Hmm, I'm not liking the look of this because that is all nettles. Oh, just took my feet steady. Oh, I can see it. And there it is. So it is actually relatively easy to get to by the nettles. Out. Indeed. West A trig point. West A, hey, that was hard. No, that's rubbish. West A. Viewpoint. And actually, for somewhere that's quite low, the lowest in Somerset, it's still not a bad view. Obviously, the pylons uh, spoil the view a bit there, but you can see right into the distance. There's quite a big distance and a view from this trig point. Who'd have thought it? And you can see the hill over there, and that's where my destination is today. So there's another few four miles over there. That's where the catcock trig point is, which is the next one. So actually, it is well positioned. They clearly knew what they were doing when they were doing trig points, obviously. Uh, it wasn't just randomly shoved here. And, uh, there was a purpose for it. Historical reference. Well, I think we had the historical reference because that helicopter would have flown at 250 mile an hour right over this trig point from over there where I saw that memorial earlier on. So there's your historical reference as well. So scoring quite highly. Discovery index. Condition of it. It's in pretty good condition here. The good old solid plinth underneath. Access is uh, straight off the footpath, so that's not a bother. Difficulty to get here? Well, the only obstruction really is the nettles. Um, I'm in pain, but actually the first time I've seen um, dock leaves, which is the natural remedy for nettles. There you go, you can add that to a, your information of the day. Picnic ability, challenging. I think it's challenging. There is, uh, it's very uneven, the ground. And as I mentioned, it's absolutely full of nettles. Not the best place to have a picnic ability. Now I've had my sandwich, I'm glad I did have it in that thing. So I'll, I'll just have my uh, tonics now for the rest of picnic ability. But take away, you know, the nettles and cut the grass back. Yeah, lovely place. Why won't you come here? Time to leave West Hay Trig Point. Three down, one to go. The most difficult one, the highest point. I already know about the access issue here. Uh, we'll talk about that as we get a bit closer. Interestingly enough, this walk takes me right past my doorstep. So I'm very familiar with the quickest way now to get there, but it will still take me a good an hour, hour and a half. So until then, I'm so lucky to live around here with all these nature reserves and it is absolutely gorgeous. You get, um, oh, I always forget the name. Mm. What's they called, that bird? Mm. Buzzard, no. Coot, no. Oh. Mm. Oh, I don't know what it is. It's all right, I'll cut all this out. Do you remember what it's called? Come on, Dennis. What's it called? Mm. 
now it's gone. Oh, sounds like that anyway. Yeah, there's a bloke stood there with a shovel. Is that a bloke with a shovel? Or is it a gate post? Well, I've just hit the 10 mile mark. I'm now starting to think I'm hallucinating. Right, back onto the road for a short section. And then I'll be making my way into Catcott. You are here. Catcott is here. So I've got there somewhere. Getting there now. Yeah, this is uh, the nature reserve that I walk around all the time for my daily exercise. There's a couple of bird hides down here. And there's a little chalkboard showing what birds have been seen in recent weeks. Who's the ho I think it's the Hawk and Owl Trust, this preserve. So they've got a lot of uh, bird boxes up everywhere. And Chris Sperrin is like the leading expert on owls and stuff. Lovely time of year to come down to these nature reserves, everything, everything in full bloom. Here we are, walking up into Catcott. As we go up the hill, you can see all the mendips in the distance. Can't quite see where I've come from, but it's 13 miles away. So a tremendous walk today. Still got a bit more to do. The trick point's on the other side of Catcott, about a mile up the road. Nearly done. I've stripped down a bit. I was saying earlier about this particular trick point at Catcott. We have walked to it before with Mrs. Waywell, and we came across the lady who own, owns part of the land. She did say that she, she would be happy for us to go up there. However, I do need to jump over a couple of fences. It's really difficult to get through. There's lots of horny and th horny bushes <laughs> and thorny bushes. I'm hoping that it is relatively straightforward, but it's not long left now, so. Oh, and the other bonus, she said there's a bunker there. Well, that's a bonus, having that gate open. Now, I've just got to find a way through the perimeter. The trick point is over that fence. Smashing view of Brent Knoll, bringing down in the background. Cheddar over in the, over in the distance. Wells over that way. So let's see where we go. Proper barbed wire fence and bushes. This field is really well protected. We even tried to come from the other side, had the same problem, couldn't get through. So, this is a treasure. It's so close, but yet so far. And I don't even know, if, I can't see over there, but look at that, I'm never gonna get over that. Oh, it's there. I can see it, but I can't get to it, bollocks. Well, this is gonna be a bit of a struggle because it's flimsy. I'm over. Now, hopefully this just doesn't end. Oh, shit, it does. Oh, bollocks. Told you, this trick point is really hard to get in. There's another fence here. Maybe I could get through there. Oh, it's just brambles though. So I'm essentially going back to where me and Mrs. Waywell went. <laughs> But now I know which gate to jump over, so I could make this quick. Right, I'm in. I'm in the field. Hop over the gate. And then I'm in. Determination. I've come this far today. I've, brought, I've walked 15 miles. Most well protected field with a trig point in it. Ever. Finally, I've got you. Cat cut, I finally got. 
Oh. The viewpoint, it's nearly 360 degrees. There are just a bit of a few trees and hedges that lie in the way, especially over this side. But other than that, it's pretty, you can see Glastonbury Tour over there. And if I walk to the hedge there, you could actually see the other side towards Taunton and Langport and so on. So yeah, visibility and distance wise, very good from this trig point. Not the best, but very, still very good. Historical reference. Well, that there is a ROC bunker. And that lady that I've been talking to you about, she says she has the key. And it's good to know we've got a bunker nearby where we live, so uh, just might need a pair of gloves to drag that off. I really didn't think it was going to be full of brambles like that. Discovery index? Well, let's be honest. It, you know where it is, but getting to it, difficulty, it's too, it's so hard. It really is. It's not easy at all. You'd have to come through somebody's property right up a hill to get here, really. I squeezed through a really thorny bush. Uh, so access is pretty much off limits. Difficulty to get here is high. Visibility, once you get here in the field, perfect. Yeah, you can see it. Lovely. Great condition as well. Good condition. Yeah. Picnic ability. It's beautiful. It's a lovely little field. I think they only use it maybe every now and then for grazing. So, um, yeah just been left to pasture so yeah it's great I think um, you could easily come up here and have a picnic if you can get through the perimeter so for that reason it's probably quite difficult but as a picnic ability not the best I'm going to sound like I'm going back on myself now but yeah decent enough so I've achieved 15.17 miles and done that in four hours, 45 minutes. So I'm quite pleased with the time. The only disappointing thing about today is that it didn't end with a pub. But, um, you know, you can't have everything. If I could just wish for one thing, it'd be a pint of Timothy Taylor's. How lovely. Well, that's a turn up for the books. What a perfect end to a trig point day. <sighs> Cheers. Hmm. Just need some gentleman relish crisps. Oh, oh, delicious. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to need two pints.